Good morning and welcome to the Professional Development Webinar Series. Today's webinar is sponsored by RD Legal Bookkeeping. They manage your business finances so you can focus on increasing your bottom line. Today's webinar is also sponsored by Ryan Video, content marketing for inbound lead generation. The topic of today's webinar is Supercharge Your Website's Lead Generation, presented by David Felder from Ryan Video. In the old world, which we will call anything before 2010, promotion was done primarily through advertisements. A company produced a series of commercials, they inserted it into broadcast, and there was a captive television audience that was exposed to it. In the old world way of doing things, consumers were being sold to. In today's brave new world, consumers want to be informed, not sold to. Through the availability of on-demand services such as Netflix, Home DVR, HBO Showtime On Demand, Network Television On Demand, through all these different channels, the consumer is finally in control. They can receive instant gratification, watch what they want, and just as importantly to us, they can avoid watching all those commercials that were part of the old world promotion plan. In today's brave new world, marketing has changed. If you want to get somebody's attention, you need to create engaging and formative information about a product or service that a prospective customer will want to seek out and use on their time when they want it, not when you're serving it to them. In today's brave new world, marketing is about inbound lead generation, making the phone ring, or creating that email inquiry. The new buzzword for 2015 and going forward is content marketing. Content marketing is a strategy, not a tactic. The strategy is to provide content to web audiences when they need it and about topics that are important to them. The purpose is to create interest, to show expertise, and to generate inbound leads. What's the difference between classic marketing and content marketing? Classic marketing interrupts. You're watching the TV show and bang, there's a commercial. You're reading the newspaper, bang, there's an advertisement. You're driving down the street, bang, another billboard. Content marketing, on the other hand, informs. Somebody has a problem, they go to their computer, they type something into the Google search bar, Hopefully, your content is what they find. Content marketing is about engagement. It's not what we have to sell. It's what the consumer is looking for. What are they typing into their Google search bar? In content marketing, we don't tell the consumer how great we are. We inform them about solutions to problems. It's about the customer and their needs, not yours. For example, a prospect isn't searching for a lawn care company that's been in business for 30 years. They're searching to get beautiful landscaping. Or, the prospect doesn't care that your accounting firm is family-owned. They care that you will help their business grow. Not to pick on landscapers or accountants, just using them as examples. Now let's talk about why we're going to use video as an example of content marketing. Video is considered the most effective of all web communication methods. A good video is more likely to make your phone ring than any other type of medium. We said that content marketing is about engagement. Nothing engages like video. In a survey, Forbes found that 75% of business executives watch work-related videos at least once per week. A Comscore study showed that website visitors are 64% more likely to buy a product online after watching a video. And Forrester Research found that email click-through rates increased 200% when video was included in an email. Some other interesting things about the Forbes study, 59% of senior executives preferred video to text. 50% who watch that video look for more information. And 50% of viewers made a business purchase after watching a video. Since we're a video production company, we're gonna show how we use video marketing as part of our content marketing strategy. We did a little research and we found that there are eight steps that our prospects use when hiring us. We create web content that will help the prospect at each step. That makes each step of their process a potential inbound lead for us. Your process may be a little bit different. Your buyers may not have an eight-step 
process in their cycle. Just pay attention to what we're talking about and you'll see the strategy of how we're using it because that's what's going to help you most, the strategy. The goal is to create web content that your prospect is going to find when they are looking for the solution to a problem that they have. And the more content you have posted on the internet, the more likely that your prospect will find you. We use a large mix of content presentation methods. For example, if you look at our blog, you'll find videos, white papers, ebooks, and blog posts. Different methods are better for different topics. Remember, it's all about creating useful content. So these are the eight steps in our prospects buying process. It goes from doing a needs assessment, in other words, determining what it is they need, all the way through producing the video and then measuring and analyzing their results. I'm not going to go through each one of these steps in great detail because your situation will be a little bit different. I'm just going to talk about the strategy so you can see how you can benefit by using a similar strategy. So the first step in our buyer's sales cycle is needs assessment. We've got four bullet points here. In each of the four bullet points in this slide, there's a piece of content that a prospect will be looking for on the web. For example, he's going to wake up one morning and say, gee, I had to make a video for my business. I hear it's really popular. Or his boss is going to come over to his desk and say, you need to make us a video. It's a good chance one of the first things he's going to do is go over to his computer and type in the search bar, why should I make a video? We have an article on our blog about why you should use a video. Another point under needs assessment is determining how's your prospect going to find your video? Well, if you go to our blog, you will find a video tutorial on how to get found on YouTube. Whether or not the prospect is going to make the video himself or hire a video production company, they still want to know how to make a video. We have an ebook that we offer about how to make a video. So right there, we've got three different pieces of web content posted that a buyer can use very, very early in their buying cycle, way before they've even thought about hiring a video production company to work for them. I'm not going to go into each slide in depth. The important factor is every bullet point becomes a piece of web content. Each piece of web content is a search item that my prospective client is looking for. That means that each search item is a potential inbound lead for my company. So now we're at step five of my prospects eight step buying process. Traditional advertising would tell you this is where you spend your money to attract the customers. But the content marketing strategy has been providing useful information, name recognition, and it's also been establishing expertise. Do you really think that your traditional advertisement is going to compete with me equally? Using a content marketing strategy, I've already helped the prospect. For the traditional marketer, they just want to sell them something. The takeaway for today's webinar should really be every single piece of content that you create and make available to your prospect becomes an opportunity for an inbound sales lead. So I'd like to thank you for your attention. We've got a few questions here, so I'm going to take them one at a time. First question is, how long should a video be? Not really a content marketing question, but it's fair. The uh, National Center of Biotech Information did a survey two years ago. Uh, they found that the average attention span of an adult was eight seconds. In other words, if you've got a video online and somebody starts looking at it and you haven't caught their attention in eight seconds, there's a pretty good chance their eyes are already wandering around the screen looking for something else to view or to read or to do. The same study also showed that the average viewer watched 2.7 minutes of a web video. So once you've got their attention, you've got them for about two minutes and 45 seconds. That tells you that you got to make your point quick you have to make it clearly, and you have to make your call to action early in your video. Should you provide a list of referrals that can be contacted to verify you are actually an expert? Earlier on during one of the slides, we said that one of the values of posting content online is that it establishes you as an expert. 
that's not really the same as calling up a lawyer and saying, I would like to be an expert witness for you in your next trial. It's, it's more of a subconscious thing where the person online who is finding your content just sees your name and you sound intelligent and they're like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. So there are a lot of bloggers. There are a lot of uh, writers who post online that they may not have a degree in, in whatever it is they're writing about, but there's just an assumption that because it's in print, they must know what they're talking about. That is assuming, of course, that everything that they're saying makes some kind of sense to you. Although anyone who's been in business any amount of time will have a list of referrals they could share, you know, to um, help establish credibility. You know, you're going to hire somebody. You want to make sure they're going to do the job they're promising. That's what a referral list is for. But that, that's really the same in any business, whether it's, it's a doctor or a landscaper or a video production company. Okay, another question here. What is the difference between making a YouTube video and marking that as opposed to using your company? I'm going to take a guess that what this questioner is asking is what's the difference between doing it yourself and hiring a production company to do it for you? Good question. We get this a lot. L let me answer that with a story. When I was in college, I had a old white car. It was a Ford Pinto. And the Ford Pinto used to have, get a lot of problems with rust by the wheels. I went to the store. I bought some automobile body putty, which is some kind of fiberglass stuff that you would smooth over the rusted out section of the car to create a patch. And then I went to uh, the local, uh, we didn't have Walmart in those days. We went to Kmart, bought a can of white spray paint and sprayed it myself. From a distance, it probably looked half decent. Up close, it, it did not look great. The point is, I was in college, and I didn't have the money to spend on auto body repair or, in, or in body work, so I did it myself. Let's take that analogy and compare it to making a video for your business. The tools to make a video are very accessible, but just having the tools doesn't mean that you're going to get the same results as somebody who's an expert at using the tools. So what's the difference between making a YouTube video and marketing it yourself as opposed to hiring a professional to do the job for you? The results you get. My company has been in the video production business for 25 years. If you bought yourself a camera, do you really think you're going to get a job as good as I'm going to give you? You may save some money, but when your prospect sees that video on the internet, does it need to look like it was done by a professional to show your company in a positive light? That's a decision that you have to make yourself. Another difference between somebody who does the video on their own and a company like mine, we know how to set up your video so it will be searched and found. YouTube says that 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. You got a lot of competition. There's a lot of noise out there that you have to shine through. Having a video on a website is of no value whatsoever if nobody is finding it. That's another benefit of using a professional company that does this on a regular basis. All right, we've got another question here. I think video marketing would be a great component to my marketing strategy, but I would want to repurpose the video on as many channels as possible. Do you help clients with that? Okay, well, first of all, let me congratulate you because the idea of repurposing your video is a fantastic idea. The way I would handle it, first of all, I would post the video on YouTube. When you put it on YouTube, you get to take advantage of Google search. YouTube comes out higher in the Google search rankings than other video websites. Repurposing refers to getting it shown on Facebook or through your Twitter feed or Instagram on your website. Yes, it's a great idea to post on as many sites as possible. You don't really need to physically upload the video to all the sites. You can just share the link. Okay, here's another question. How can a company make a video about the consumer and not promote their expertise too much? I, I want to make sure I wasn't misleading when I say that having a video or any kind of content marketing information out there, you know, shows your expertise. You don't make a video to brag about how wonderful your company is. You make that video to inform your client. The expertise is an assumed thing. When you watch the news on television, do you really know anything about the people that are reading you the news? They could be Barbie dolls. They could be journalism majors from Columbia University. 
or anything in between. You just assume because they're on TV and they're providing you with news and the news sounds like it must be real, you assume those people have credibility. Well, it's the same thing when somebody is watching a video on the internet. They're watching a video about teeth implants that's presented by a dentist. They're not going to research the dentist to find out where he went to college and what his grades were. They're going to assume, oh, a dentist? He's got a video about teeth implants? He must know something about it. It's not like he's standing up there and yelling that I'm an expert. That expertise is assumed on the part of the viewer. It's the same for something that's been written, an infographic, a blog post. Those are all situations where the consumer will assume there's some kind of expertise behind it. I'm not saying that you can outwardly lie to your prospects, but media has an amazing ability to convince people. All right, I have time for one last question. How many videos do I need to produce? I think it's important to keep in mind that the content marketing that we're talking about is not a tactic, it's a strategy. So there, there is no real clear cut answer as to how many videos do you need. Do you want to make one video and throw it online and say you're marketing? Probably not. Let's go back to uh, something I said a little bit earlier. Content marketing doesn't have to all be video. For example, I showed you eight steps in my buyer's purchasing cycle. And each step had roughly five bullet items in it. So eight times five, 40. There were 40 opportunities there to create an inbound lead. So what I would do, I would look at all 40 of those points and choose what are the most important ones? Which ones can I show something that would work well on a video? I might only make 10 videos there. Maybe I would make 20. I don't know. It depends on the topic and what I could show. Some of those topics might be better suited by a blog post or an ebook or a white paper. There's a lot of ways to get information across. If we can just go back to one of the first things I said, I said that content marketing is a strategy. So in answer to your question, how many videos do I need? It really depends what fits in your strategy. Come up with a plan over the next 12 months. Post a new video maybe every month or every two weeks. So in the course of a year or two years, I would have a lot more videos. Come up with a strategy, something that you can live with, something that makes sense for what you sell, either a product or a service, and, and follow that strategy. I guess that kind of wraps it up for today. I'd like to thank uh, everybody for listening in. The uh, professional webinar series is a service of uh, MRCC. The opportunity to present a webinar is available to all members of uh, the MRCC. If you have a webinar that you'd like to talk about presenting, please call the Chamber Office, 201-529-5566. Thanks for your attention and have a great day.